soldiers and town folk alike, died by the thousands. Very few survived. Ashina became the setting for the most tragic massacre of the Sengoku era. And for a long time after, it was said a demon lurked the land. Hey guys, Thing Fishy here. So make your character, choose the Samurai class, and grab a Golden Seed as the starting item. While we run to Torrent, let's talk about this video. Welcome to my fifth Elden Ring build guide, and this one is a dex build. Many of the best dex weapons in Elden Ring also scale with another stat, so we will be throwing in a little of something else later. We're going to be using the Samurai starting weapon, the Uchi Katana, and some other katana that I've forgotten the name of for the moment. It's not a very popular one, so I doubt you'll have heard of it. Now, before we start, if you're looking for another ridiculously broken dex build, I reckon you could just follow my previous arcane build guide and just level dex instead of arcane for some easy mode boss bullying. But I've been wanting to make a gnarly samurai build since release, and this seemed like the perfect time. This build is super powerful throughout the game and gave me some of the most satisfying fights I've had in Elden Ring. If you find this guide useful, give it a like and subscribe to my channel for more build guides. Also leave me a comment below of what build you'd like to see me try next. If you'd like to come see me figure out all this stuff live, give me a follow on Twitch. Okay, so we're at Torrent, let's do it. So we start by heading through the ruins, picking up the map and the whetstone blade along the way. Now head south towards Weeping Peninsula, picking up the Somber One on the chair by Argyll Lake, and the Gold Pickled Foulfoot to the northeast of it. Grab the Smithing Stones and the Stone Sword Key on the bridge, and the Smithing Stone Twos by the Morning Star Carriage. Then head to the Castle Morn Rampart Grace. From here go pick up the nearby Golden Seed and map, then head south from the map to this beach to get the Somber Smithing Stone Two. From here we're going to take our usual route through Weeping to grab all the Sacred Tears and some extra items. First head to the Kalu Baptismal Church for one tier, then around the map to the Church of Pilgrimage for the second tier, and pick up the Bleed Grease from the graveyard just outside, then southwest for the final tier at the 4th Church of Marika. Now walk back to Limgrave and head up the hill, collecting the Golden Seed and lighting the Stormhill Shack Grace. From here, head northeast for the strength physic, jump down the rocks and head northeast, kill the golden Val knight, then jump down to grab the lance and the exalted flesh from the camp. Light the saint's bridge grace, then go help Alexander out of the hole. Then we... Look, I know you think I'm a monster for this, but really Miyazaki is the monster here for giving him such a great item. Thank fuck Muriel doesn't drop anything though. On a serious note, I've seen some of you ask why I kill him here rather than doing his questline for the more powerful version. The reason is that I see a larger benefit in having a decent damage boost for every boss in the game, rather than waiting for a slightly better one just for the last few bosses at the end of the game when you're already super powerful. I feel exactly the same way about the Rotten Wing Sword Insignia. Even more so for that one actually. Head across the Saints Bridge grabbing the Smithing Stones, then buy three Smithing Stones and a crack pot from the merchant. Now head southeast past the ruins and jump down this cliff here. Loot the graveyard for the runes and the Fever's Cookbook for the Sleep Pot recipe. Head north 
jumping down these stones and onto the third church of Marica for the wondrous physic and another sacred tear. Then head south through the Misswood all the way to Fort Hyatt. Grab the golden seed out front, then up the ladder. Okay, so grab the grace near Fort Hyatt first, then up the ladder for the first half of the Dectus Medallion. Walk back to the third church, then use the teleporter in the lake behind it to walk to Caelid. Ride south from the bestial sanctum, picking up this golden seed on the way. Light the grace by the bridge, then head up and around the ledge to this tree. Jump down the roots, then across the bridge to see if the cavalry will play ball first try. This guy is super annoying. I still haven't found a 100% consistent method for getting him to fall off every time. But if he gets stuck on the ledge like this, either reset or just go put the kettle on. He will fall off eventually. Level up at the grace and jump up the spirit spring. Loot the runes and ride west towards the minor road tree and up the spring behind it. Grab the grace outside Fort Farrath, then head inside. Up the ladder for the second half of the Dectus medallion. Then jump down the second hole. Grab the golden rune 12 by the rats, then jump across and down for Radagon's sore seal. Equip it and let the rats kill you. Now walk to Storm Hill and head southeast to pick up these smithing stones from this chair. Loot the runes from the graveyard to the northeast, then go see the trolls and get one of them to run into this statue for more. Then head back to Storm Hill and go north to the Broken Bridge. Drop down and head round the cliffs and into Leonia. Grab the sacred tear in the church of Irith and drop down the cliffs. Ride northwest to the putrefied ruins and take the teleporter to the Rea Lucaria gates. Light the grace out front, then jump down and loot these two runes from the nearby graveyard. Get the smithing stones in the gazebo, then ride northwest for the Rea Lucaria key. Walk back to the grace, then head into the gate town, grabbing these stones from the plaza, dropping down for these ones by the crab, picking up the golden seed in the gate town, and lighting the grace near the map. From here, head towards the opening in the cliffs to get to the Boil Prawn Shack, then head south of it for the Dexterity Tier, and then northwest for more stones in the gazebo by the lobsters. Walk back to Rea Lucaria and through the gate, then out the north gate to the Bellum Highway. Drop down the nearby Spirit Spring for a somber three, then back up to grab another Sacred Tier in the Bellum Church, then to the Grand Lift and up to the Altus Plateau. When you get up to Altus, ride northeast to the Highway Grace and up the stairs. Grab all the golden seeds in the outskirts, then head east down into the river and into the sealed tunnel. Grab the Grace here and get the Smithing Stone Bell Bearing 2 from the chest. Jump down the lift shaft for this Smithing Stone 5. Pick up this Golden Rune 5 by the Illusionary Wall. Go through the rest of the cave, collecting three more smithing stone fives and a golden rune nine at the bottom. Back to the stake of Marika and drop down to the bottom and bait this abductor into attacking you by the statue for some smithing stone sixes. Then walk back to the first church in Limgrave and head into the lake to the dragon burnt ruins. Open the chest below to transport to the Celia crystal tunnels. Run out and grab these smithing stone fives by the hut. One more on the upper level. Then run over and jump. God, I hate this cave. Grab the two in the next room. Open the shortcut and get the somber four. Then the final one in the last room. Now head back to the gate town grace and ride towards this rock to bring you to more stones by the flower. Then northwest for more at the poison gazebo then towards the academy to reach this teleporter. Light the grace by EG and walk back to the gate town grace one more time. Ride west past the blood church to find this little scarab. Bonk him for the blood flame blade incantation. Now head back to Caelid. Apply the bleed grease to your Uchi and start hacking away at Grail. Reapply halfway through and pop the pickled foul foot just as Grail dies. Head to the lake facing cliffs and down to the merchant for the last smithing stone two. Then back to the round table for five smithing stone threes, 12 smithing stone fours, and by the finger seal. Head back to EG and level your Uchi to plus 14. 
then level up. Now finally head to the South Argyll Lake Grace and ride into the lake for this scarab for the Unsheath Ash of War. Now we already have Unsheath on our Uchi, but we want to infuse it with a keen infusion. As you can tell by my weapon level, I totally forgot to do this until I killed Moog, so you're going to be doing more damage than me for the whole game. At the Grace Before Margit, level up your flasks if you haven't already, memorise Blood Flame, and put the Dex and Strength tiers into your Physic. Now if you want to totally flex on Margit, parry him, then attack twice. Parry again, and take the riposte. Hit him as he stands up, and repeat all this one more time. Equip the Jar Shard in your new pouch, level up, then head through Stormvale. All the way to the secluded cell. Before we fight Godric, grab the crack pots from the pot friends nearby. For Godric's phase 1, concentrate on charged R2s and the unsheath R2 to build up posture damage. Run straight up to him at the start of phase 2 and unsheath for the stagger, take the riposte for the win. Now, forget to level up and head into Rhea Lucaria, run through the dungeon and get memed by arrows. Then realise that if you don't get them back, you have to do an hour of setup all over again from the very start. Panic, scream, quit out. Light the classroom grace, use the golden rune 8 and level up. Buff outside Red Wolf's door and head in for a very easy fight. Three unsheaths is all it takes. Level up. Grab the golden seed outside, the somber five at the bottom of the ball ramp, bully the Karian parry god, and head in for Renala. Punch the sweetings to stop them spawning all over the place, then spam R1s on Renala for a one cycle. As soon as she dies though, use that second of time you get to buff with blood flame. Oh, okay, no blood flame then. Luckily, unsheaths and R2s make light work of her. Level up, walk back to EG and head towards the ruin strewn precipice for the last smithing stone 5. Head back to EG and level the Uchi to plus 16. Warp to the ball prawn shack and head east to Raya. Walk back to buy her necklace, then ride back to her for the invitation. Head up to the Dectus Lift and take her hand to head to Volcano Manor. Run upstairs past the Invader for a Smithing Stone 6, then down into the darkness. Then head through the dungeon all the way to the Prison Town Grace. Up to the top of this roof for the Somber 6, then up the elevator and along this cliff for the 5. Open the shortcut and now double back on yourself. Now I do know there is a better way of getting down here, but it eluded me on this playthrough, so I just rolled through the lava into this cave, for the smithing stone sixes between the graves. Then to the other cave with the magma worm for this smithing stone seven. Now we're going to go on a little adventure for more weapon upgrades. First off, head across the capital battlefields and down towards the hero's grave. Get this rune bear nice and angry and get him to break open this statue for you. Grab the sixes, then head all the way across Altus to the Wyndham Ruins, all the way around Volcano Manor to another very angry bear. If you're lucky, he'll shout at this statue from a distance like he did for me. Grab the sixes, then walk back to EG, pop a Golden Rune 12 and upgrade to a plus 18 Uchi. Now back to Volcano Manor for Godskin. Parry strats for Phase 1. Check my guide on this if you're unsure how to do it. Then for phase two, if you don't fancy dealing with his usual rolling shenanigans, we do enough DPS here to just brute force it with some unsheaths. Level up, grab the golden rune 12 just outside, and head through the rest of the dungeon to Rykard's grace. For Rykard, as usual, we equip the lance in the right hand, serpent hunter in the left, and spam crouching L1s for both phases.
Now at this point, we're going to level up our arcane to 20. This hurts a little bit to not level decks, but this is one of the very few points in the game where you're able to get 10 levels from one boss. If you prefer to do this in stages across the next few bosses, you're welcome to, it won't change anything. Now for the Tree Sentinel. These guys are a joy to fight with the Katana. There's two different approaches that I like. Three unsheaths for a stagger, and then another for some big crit damage. Alternatively, you can parry, charge R2, take two steps forward, then another charge R2. Check out my Tree Sentinel parry guide for more information on this approach. Level up and head through Lendell to grab the West Avenue Balcony Grace, then head back to Fort Farrath in Caled. Jump down the Spirit Spring and grab the Sacred Tear in the Church of the Plague. Then jump down the cliffs and head for the Grace at the south of the Swamp. Ride into the Swamp to the Stake of Marika and buff up. Ride into Commander O'Neill and spam Unsheath on him. Three for the Stagger, then take the Repost. Then ignore him for a while and kill the summons. One more unsheath should make him summon again. Get some damage in while he does this. And if you want to play it super safe, jump on torrent for the final hits to avoid getting ganked by the axe squad. Take the needle to gallery and quit out for an instant repair. Then take it to Millicent. Now we're going to head back to the Altus and ride all the way to the shaded castle. Head inside and to this tower to grab the Valkyrie's prosthesis. Give it to Millicent at the Erdtree Gazing Hill, then ride across Altus to the Great Bridge and use the teleporter. Then head to Windmill Heights to fight Godskin Apostle. This is a really easy fight at this stage. Three unsheaths will stagger, take the riposte and some R1s for the kill. Level up at the Grace, then you'll find Millicent nearby. Now, once again, guys, Miyazaki is the monster here, not me. Just remember that. I will not forget what you have done. Oh, God, that one hurts. Head back to the round table and grab the extra talisman pouch. Equip the prosthesis in it, not the heirloom. I'm an idiot. Speaking of being an idiot, I realized in the edit that I didn't kill the Avenue Avatar in this run. So you can go back and do that now for some extra runes. Grab the Golden Seed and head to Godfrey. As always, single R1s between combos for the safest fight here. When he dies, equip the Heirloom in your new slot for a total of 15 extra points in decks. Level up and head to Morgoth. This is such a fun fight with the Uchi. Three unsheaths to stagger, take the riposte, and one more for phase two. From here, just wait for an attack with a slow recovery for the final blows. Level up, now head to the mountaintops all the way to the Zamor ruins. Double back on this hill and shoot the scarab out of the tree for a somber seven. Then head across the bridge and kill this big scarab for the somber eight. Now to the freezing lake grace. Wake this chap up from his nap and bait him into attacking you next to this statue for more smithing stone sevens. Now head round the lake to the first church of Marika, then up the rocks for more sevens. Then go to the bridge directly above the ancient Snow Valley ruins for the Somber Nine. Now ride through the rest of the area and light the grace by Fire Giant. Head up the rocks behind it and into the skull for the ancient dragon smithing stone. Now we're going to kill this invader for some extra runes. I don't think he drops anything interesting. Now if you've got your parrying down, you can trivialise this fight. All of his attacks are parryable, including that nifty weapon art he has. I bet that's pretty good in PvP, actually. Alternatively, if you don't think you'll enjoy fighting this guy, just take him to the rocks nearby and...
Oh, come on, it's an OP samurai build. What did you expect? Go level it up to plus nine. Now it's time for Fire Giant. Put Rivers of Blood in your left hand so you can still use Blood Flame Blade and Unsheath. Phase one is pretty simple. Spam your L1s at his foot. For phase two, wait for the hand to drop, then do two unsheaths. One more on his leg afterwards will stun him and allow you a riposte. For the rest of the fight, keep your Uchi buffed with Black Flame and hack away at the foot for a safe phase two. Now head back to Kaelid for Radan. As always, ride backwards at the start of the fight to despawn him and skip the stressful run. Buff up as he runs towards you and get stuck in with your L1s. You'll comfortably be able to do 70 to 80% of his health, meaning phase 2 will be over in just a few hits. Poppy's Remembrance, then level up. Now head across to Kaelid, to the western minor Erdtree to kill the Erdtree avatar. He does big damage, but he doesn't have a lot of health. Put another point in Vig, and equip the Flame Shrouding Crystal tier to your Physic. Now I quickly want to mention something that's particularly important on a Samurai build. Fashion. For some cool Samurai armor, you can kill Shibiri for his set, go to the Spirit Caller Cave in the mountaintops for the White Reed set, and for adjustments, kill the demi-humans in Limgrave for the tailoring tools. I have literally no idea which set is best in terms of defensive stats, and if you do, you're playing these games wrong. Just wear the one that looks the coolest. Now it's time to head into Nokron, and quite honestly, at this point, I'm convinced that I'm more likely to accidentally no-hit every boss in the game than I am to ever make it into Nokron without dying to gravity. Kill Big Moose with some L1s, then head to Gargs. For maximum satisfaction, I'd highly recommend going for unsheaths here. Four for the stagger, then take the riposte. Then do the same for his buddy. As always, don't get greedy here. Pop the Ancestor's Remembrance and level up. Now head back to Karia Manor for Rani's questline. Bully Loretta, speak to Rani. Head down into Nokron for the Finger Slayer Blade. Back to Rani for the Inverted Statue then up to the Karian Tower for the Curse Mark of Death. Back to Deep Root Depths to bully Fear's Champions. Pretend it's patch 1.05 and spam Corpse Piler on all of them. Head through for Amazula to the Dragon Temple Transept Grace. Head back to Carlay at the Church of Ella for the Crack Pots and the Crafting Kit, then to the Ball Prawn Shack and into the village of the Albanorix for the first half of the Halic Tree Medallion and any extra mushrooms or St. Trina's lilies that you need. Craft your sleep pots and put the duo to sleep. Buff up, then do three unsheaths. Take the repost, then finish with L1s. Level up, then head back to the round table. Pop runes until you have enough to buy all the materials you need to level your Uchi to plus 25. Now back to Farron. So another little tip here, unequip your sleep pots after Godskin so you don't confuse them with heals afterwards. Run past the dragon and grab the ancient dragon somber stone. Head up to the grace and pop back to level rivers of blood to plus 10. Now go bully the sentinel with either the unsheathed stagger strat or parries. Buff up outside the boss room and head in for beastie care. It's just standard melee strats for these guys. Jumping attacks to punish and L1s when you have time for beast. Then for Malaketh, get an unsheath in at the start, then always punish that slow 1-2 combo with your dual wielding attacks. Now time for the worst boss in the game. Buff up and use the exalted flesh that we picked up right at the beginning of the game to make sure we can kill this guy before we have to fight him. Oh god, no, 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 I'm not doing it, I'm not doing it, I'm not fighting him. Right guys, I've been thing fishy, 
build was fun while it lasted, but this is the end. Thanks, thanks for watching. Unless, head to the round table and buy a dagger. At the grace, swap the fire physic out for the strength one and equip golden vow to your dagger. Outside the boss room, equip the commander's standard and the dagger in your right hand and rivers of blood in your left. Use golden vow, two hand the standard and use its weapon art. Pop the exalted flesh and replenish your FP. Run in, spam corpse pile up. Now for Godfrey. If you watch my guides a lot, you know I like to showcase a different strat for the second Godfrey where possible. This time I'm going for unsheaths and reposts. Four to stagger, then take the repost. From there, four more to phase two. As always for Horolu, attack only when you're sure it's safe. Unsheaths are fast enough to be safe here. As always, don't panic and don't be greedy. Level up and head to Castle Soul for Commander Nile. Buff up outside and hit the right summon with Corpse Piler, then the same again for the left summon. Now here's a completely safe strat for the commander. Keep your distance and bait these small tornado attacks. When he does them, dodge and hit one L1, then roll away twice. You can do this for the whole fight if you like. As always, you can dodge the big tornado attack and use its cooldown for massive damage. And the last option for maximum satisfaction is the good old parry. Again, check out my guide if you're not confident with this. Level up, grab the other half of the medallion and head to Ordener Town. Once again, I'm using Ordener Skip to save time, but as I showed in the faith guide, the new light rolls are great for dodging the archers if this skip gets patched in the future. Jump on this pillar, line your compass up to the right of this notch and do two jumps with the direction order being 12 o'clock 7 o'clock. Head through the Halig tree, unlock the shortcut, then head to Loretta. Treat this exactly the same as the other tree sentinel fights. And as always, you can use those big blue attacks as an opportunity to get in some big damage. Level up and head through the rest of the dungeon to light the Halig tree roots grace. Now head to Mogwin Palace. Head through the area, Grab the Lord's Rune in the cave and the Grace at the midpoint. Before we fight Moog, head back to Altus and bully Eleonora for the purifying tear. For Moog, it's both good news and bad news. He's weak to the bleed of our build, but exceptionally strong against the fire aspect. So this is definitely one of the harder fights in this run. Use either unsheaths for staggers or just L1s when you can. I find I get a little too greedy using the unsheaths in this fight, so I didn't go for staggers here. Attack all the way through knee hill to counter his healing and you should be left with less than half health for phase 2. Now at this point we've hit level 55 for both dex and vig. With our talismans this means we've hit the soft caps for both. So from now on we're only going to be leveling arcane for some extra damage. Go get hugged by fear and into the fortis axe fight. Once again, we're pretty over leveled, so just spam L1's at his feet for a very easy fight. While we're in a dragon slaying mood, let's go fight Plassey. And once again, doing one attack at the front, then running to the back for another to avoid the lightning and get some damage in while I do. Use the AoE to recast Blood Flame. And then for the rest of the fight, just punish each claw attack with L1's get more in during his downtime, and use the lasers as an opportunity to rebuff with Blood Flame. Now head to Ainsel River for Estelle. Once again, this is a pretty easy fight. Two full combos on the head is all it takes, but play it safe and attack what and where you can for a very manageable fight. Now for Radagon and Elden Beast. Start off the fight by spamming L1s on Radagon while he gets his shit together, then three unsheaths to stagger then take the repost. This will do the vast majority of his health. Dodge the triple slam and punish the recovery, then finish off with some safe attacks. 
For Beast, it's just taking the L1s when you can. You have lots of opportunity here for multiple hits, so let Millicent's prosthesis do its thing. For some reason, I completely forgot about the new light rolls for this fight and used Bloodhound Step for Elden Stars, but the light rolls probably work a little better. Okay, one fight left. And if you thought I was going to make it through a whole YouTube video without using it, maybe someday, but not today. Head back to the round table to buy the buckler. And once again, the run ends where you might have expected. The Melania fight with dual katanas is not something I need to explain. Dual katanas, especially these two, the Uchi and Rivers of Blood, is the single most used and definitely the most viewed way of defeating Melania, mainly due to just one man. Rather than me telling you how to beat her with katanas, go watch the master himself do it. The general strategy is pretty similar to what I did in my arcane build. So since this is a Sekiro themed build, let's do it the way Wolf would, with deflections and mortal draw. As you can see, I've ditched the armor for the light roll waterfowl dodge. Check out my video on this if you don't know how to do it. Now Rivers of Blood, despite its nerf for PvP, still completely bullies Melania. It can stagger lock her as long as you do it behind her and when she's not already in an animation. For both phases, the strategy is to parry three times, take the riposte, two-hand Rivers of Blood, then use Corpse Pilot. You can also safely use Corpse Spiler in two other places. Firstly, when she lands from either of her jump attacks. And second, while she is recovering from the Scarlet Aeonia. If you're not comfortable parrying Melania, but would like to try it out, for what is, in my opinion, the most satisfying fight you can have in the game. Check out my detailed guide on it, I'll leave a link in the description. And that's it, how to bully Elden Ring using a dex build. If you've made it this far and actually tried this build, please let me know how you got on in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like, leave me a comment with a future build suggestion, and subscribe to my channel for more Elden Ring build guides. As always, thanks for watching. See you soon.